All right, welcome back to the show. And I'm not even going to bother mentioning how it has been forever since I posted a video. And yes, we are in my kitchen because it's the only spot I have to film right now. So enjoy the echo and the lovely ambiance. So a lot of you guys probably know that I spend most of my time riding around on motorcycles and making videos about them. But I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I do when I'm not working, which I have now invented this little series that I'm calling downtime. Basically, I just wanted to show you what I do when I'm not on camera and I'm turning it into being on camera. So we'll see how it all goes. Long-winded intros aside, some of you may know that I fancy a little bit of the guitar. I'm a, a metalhead through and through. And so I have been teaching myself how to play the guitar. This is my Jackson 7 string that I bought for like 200 bucks. And then because I'm vain and silly, I bought a Dean Tyrant because <laughs> it looks wild and it's a ton of fun. Also not a particularly expensive guitar. The only problem is all of these have fixed bridges. So to remedy that, I have bought another $200 guitar. Uh, I bought this one on Craigslist. It is thoroughly a Craigslist guitar, and I am going to show you the process of taking this guitar here and rebuilding it and turning it into something cool, playable, and uh, just fixing it up because it's currently covered in peanut butter. I'll tell you the whole story, and uh, let's dive on in. One of the many things I've discovered in my quest of amateur luthery is that much like motorcycles, nothing cheap comes without some weirdness. In this case, I'm the third owner of this particular guitar. The first owner was probably younger, and what he or she lacked in taste, they made up for in a healthy allowance. This particular guitar was at one point covered in stickers, which having personally tried to remove stickers from another guitar, I can attest to it being a giant pain in the ass. This is where the skippy comes in. If you're not going to use an industrial solvent like Goo Gone, which might harm the finish, the oil in peanut butter can work to dissolve an adhesive on a sticker. The flip side is that peanut butter is made of peanuts, and peanuts are not soft. Much like Jeweler's Rouge, peanut butter can act as a mild abrasive, and if not done carefully, can swirl the finish on your guitar. We'll have to see if the previous owner's fix did any damage. Unfortunately, the first owner decided to lop the Limited's iconic headstock off in order to make it fit in the case, leaving a blunted, squared-off edge, which is a crying shame. The cut wasn't made by your average drunk uncle, but still, just buy a bigger case. Lastly, let's talk about the electronics. The first owner did add in some DiMarzio pickups. They're either a set of Nortons, Transitions, or PAFs. Without any way to measure the output, I'm left guessing. Regardless, we're looking at roughly $200 worth of pickups, which makes the guitar worth well more than the $250 asking price. But of course, on Craigslist, no good thing comes without a dumb choice. The bridge pickup is coil split, which is cool. I was probably going to do that anyway since I have yet to try my hand at coil splitting, but unfortunately they did it dumber than the village idiot after getting kicked in the head by a mule. The switch does not act like it would on a normal guitar, you know, selecting bridge position in the first, neck in third, and then running both at the same time in the middle. Nope, this one coil splits the bridge in the middle position. Why not simply run a push-pull pot instead? Who knows? It's Craigslist. But enough of the background, let's get into working on this guitar and fixing it up. Alrighty, so all of the strings are off of this guitar, and I have throw those away. I have exercised the Floyd Rose bridge out of the back of this guitar so that I could actually really get in and clean this properly. And for those of you who are wondering, 
any of the skills that I have doing this, I've just sort of picked up from either watching YouTube videos or um, just winging it on my guitars. And I'm not using anything that you couldn't find on the shelves of your local guitar center because I'm a cheapo. With the strings off, the next step is to clean the bridge up. This is a grody enough task when it's your own finger gunk on there, but having two previous owners worth of DNA, I had to give this one a serious scrubbing, which means taking the whole bridge apart. This is not a difficult task, it just requires patience and staying organized. There's a lot of little screws and springs for you to drop, and any one of them lost means a trip to the guitar center or more likely trying to find one online. Once the bridge is clean, it's time to move on to the body. This one's easy. Wax on, wax off. Okay, now it's time for polishing the frets. But before we do that, I do want to talk a little bit about the finish on here. I think that the peanut butter used to remove the stickers might have been more abrasive than the guy bargained for. Uh, and it left a lot of swirls in the finish. So uh, that or he was using a really rough rag. Um, so it has a pretty swirled finish on it. Honestly, I mean, it's just a flat black finish, so I don't really care. But it is a bit of a bummer, and maybe I will go back in and polish out some of these surface scuffs. Um, and I don't know. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll get up enough energy to refinish the whole thing. But the neck here, the, the headstock, is in really good shape, which makes me think there weren't any stickers up here that necessitated using something like peanut butter, which is a mild abrasive. So now I need to do a pass along all these frets, and I'm already looking down at some of these where the previous owners have played and bent these strings. Um, and there's a handful of spots where the strings were either sitting too low or whatever. So a lot of these frets are gonna need recrowning eventually, but today let's just polish them up and see how they look. Right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that polishing frets is a tedious task, but well worthwhile. Honestly, I think it's one of the spots where you see the biggest improvement, and I do it pretty much every time I slap a new set of strings on a guitar. Just don't forget to clean and oil the fretboard when you're done. On this particular guitar, some of the frets are ready for a recrowning, but I do not have the tools yet to tackle this job. We're gonna have to wait until after a proper setup to see if any of them end up buzzing out. And just like that, the neck is all clean. Um, it's remarkable what was actually under probably years worth of finger grime and uh, dust and all sorts of other nice, lovely stuff that you don't want to eat. Um, I don't understand why when you have the strings off, you wouldn't just you know, clean and polish the fretboard one of the most important touch points on the guitar, but oh well. Um, it, this thing, since it's not sealed, took the cleaners really, really well, and the wood was really dehydrated, so now it has a lot of life put back into it, and it feels a lot smoother. Next up is dealing with the pots. So I'm gonna drill those out, install the pot sleeves, get them reinstalled, and then move on to the bridge. This is where I made my first mistake on this project. One thing you might not know is that there are two different kinds of potentiometers or pots on a guitar, splined and solid shaft pots, each one requiring a different knob to fit. Solid shaft knobs use a set screw to hold themselves in place, and since the shafts themselves are thicker in many cases, a set screw style knob will wobble on a splined shaft. Of course, this is the problem I find here. Luckily, I do have a set of pot sleeves floating around from a previous project, which act as an adapter for solid shaft knobs to work on splined ones. It does require drilling out the inside of the knob so that the sleeve will fit, and as I did this, I got lazy. I didn't set the channel locks wide enough, meaning I didn't get a good grip. When I drilled the knobs out, they spun with the drill bit and made contact with the channel locks, stripping the black finish off part of the knobs. This turned out to be something of a happy accident, as beneath the black finish was a nice brass knob, and it added a splash of color, but I could have easily ruined the knobs doing this. 
If you're trying this at home, do it right, don't do it like me. With that done, it was time to move on to reassembling the guitar. This is where I made my second mistake. I waited until I had the strings under a little bit of tension before installing the springs in the body. This resulted in me stripping out much of the threads in the wood. This was my first time working on a Floyd Rose, so this mistake was probably bound to happen. But if you're not looking to damage your guitar, don't do it like I did. I eventually got the screw seated, but in the future, toothpicks and wood glue are going to be the only way to repair that damage. I'm going to chalk this mistake up to project fatigue since at this point I had been working on the guitar for the better part of four hours and filming it at the same time. Alrighty folks, it has been like an hour and a half since the last piece to camera, I think. Um, Restringing this was a lot more effort than I would have initially thought and I have gotten close, but I have not finished the restring. Um, mostly the problem is, is I've gone up in string gauge, which means that the springs that are holding the trem in place don't have enough strength in them to pull the trem all the way flat, which is a bit of a bummer. I'm close enough for government work, but uh, the problem is, is my action is still very high. Um, I would say I'm probably about uh, 10 miles too high on this. Um, it's really, really high. Uh, I need to lower the bridge uh, pretty substantially. So I'm gonna get some more springs for this and then finish it up, but I've been working on this thing for a long time today and it has seriously, seriously improved. Um, the body is looking a lot better. It does have those swirls in it, which is a bit of a bummer. Maybe I can figure that out. But hey, project for another day. So if you wanna see how this finishes up, I will have another video sometime soon. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.